as we reported earlier, it was a big night in Iowa last night for former President Donald Trump. But where does this leave him and the race to be the Republican nominee for president? Here with more analysis on the results from the Hawkeye State and a preview of things to come from the Granite State is Matthew Green, politics professor at the Catholic University of America. Professor Green, great to have you back on. So how do you think President Trump's team is assessing last night's victory? And what do you think the Haley and DeSantis, DeSantis camps are thinking right now? Well, I'm sure that the Trump campaign is happy. You know, the 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 Iowa caucuses are they're a game of expectations, right? There's only less than two percent of delegate votes are decided there. But um, with that in mind, you know, Trump met, if not exceeded, expectations, getting over fifty percent of the vote, which is exceedingly well, uh, exceedingly high for a, a non-incumbent, which I guess in a way he is. Um, you know, DeSantis is probably happy because the polls looked like he was going to be in third, and he sort of eked out a second place finish over Nikki Haley, but it was very close. And if you look back a year ago, when people were saying DeSantis was going to give Trump a run for his money compared to how he did yesterday in Iowa. Um, I have to say it's probably a disappointment for his campaign. Yeah, and as you know, I mean, a lot of people really went out there. They braved the extreme winter weather to caucus in Iowa, but the turnout was actually the lowest in 24 years. That said, do you think these results, do they really reflect how Iowans think and vote? Well, there's always uh, fewer people going to caucuses than there are eligible voters in Iowa because it's an unusual system where you've got to go out in the evening on a weeknight, uh, show up at a school or what have you, and participate in a debate and cast ballots. Uh, it's an old model of democracy, which is frankly pretty time consuming. But I do think that it's a, it's a, the point is well taken that the turnout in this caucus versus la previous caucuses was low. And um, I think on the one hand, it could just be weather, um, but it could also be uh, emblematic or symptomatic of a, a lack of enthusiasm uh, by voters for these candidates. And that includes Trump. And so that's something I think all the campaigns need to worry about is whether none of them are really exciting the base, uh, you know, to the degree that they'll need to be eager to vote in the general election. Yeah, and with a lot of folks heading to New Hampshire, uh, President Trump actually was in a New York courtroom today for the E. Jean Carroll defamation case. And, um, you know, just wondering, is there anything that could trip up Trump's bid for the Republican nomination at this point? Uh, certainly, there are things that could Trump up uh, could trip him up. Um, you know, one is that either of these candidates, DeSantis or well in Hampshire, um, maybe not beating Trump, but um, getting in the 30, 40 percentile, you know, percent of the vote. And then you know, South Carolina, which is a delegate rich state, um, if Trump does not do well there, then I think the narrative changes and it becomes one in which Trump is maybe no longer the favored candidate of the Republican base. I, 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 I think Trump, it's, it's his race to lose at this point. Um, it, it's going to be hard to beat Trump, but it's not impossible. It's certainly still a potent, there's still a, a possibility that Trump may not get the nomination. All right, leave it right there, Professor. Always great to be with you and get your insights. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me.